Got a Photoshop question? Brought to you by the National Association of Photoshop Professionals. It's Ask Dave. This week's question comes from uh, Marlena Buck, who says, or asks, I have both Photoshop and Illustrator. I know there are some ways you can use the two of them together. What are some examples? And this is a favorite thing I love to do because why not take advantage of both of them? Let's start over in Illustrator. For people who've never used it before, Illustrator can be a fairly complicated program, but oddly enough, there's a lot of built-in elements that you just have to go and find. For example, if I look under the window menu, under brush libraries, I can look at, for example, artistic, and then here's an interesting set, artistic chark charcoal pencil. Try saying that three times fast. And it brings up this collection of brushes. Now, you can use them in Illustrator by applying them to something. So for example, if I make a circle and then simply click on one of these, you'll see it applies that to the circle. So right away, that's, that's a pretty interesting design element just by clicking on a path that you've created. But it goes beyond that. We can even say, I just want this element the way it is. I just want to try and see what this looks like. So you just drag it onto the page and then we've got this little design element. And if I select it, I can then make it bigger. And then this is the function we'll be using a lot throughout this procedure. Just simply copy it, switch back to Photoshop, and when I paste it, I'm going to paste it as a smart object. And that's going to create kind of a link between the two. So now when I click OK, it brings it in and I can still scale it up a little bit larger if I want but here's one little design element. Now the fact that it's a vector smart object over here means that anytime I can double click on it so if I decided that I really wanted to add to this and have some other element on here coming off the end maybe whatever it might be then I just have to close it and save it and when I come back to Illustrator it automatically opens up. Now the interesting thing about this is there's some really interesting almost watercolor type effects. So if I go back to the brush library and pick the ones that are actually called watercolor, ironically enough, here we are in a vector program, but look at these beautiful watercolor type effects that we can get and use in Photoshop. So I could take, for example, these and copy them and paste them into a Photoshop document. Now, in this case, because I did it as a smart object, they're going to come in as one set. The other option would have been when I paste it to just paste as pixels. And the advantage of doing it this way is then once I'm finished, it'll be a regular layer. So if I wanted to, I could take just these elements and do something with them as well. Now let's look at one last example in Illustrator before we look at going the other way around. The other option here are these things called symbols and there's all this library of symbols which include all kinds of things. So for example, let's just look under logo elements and here's all these graphic elements we can use. Now they're quite small but that's okay because once again I can just drag out onto the page, copy that, switch back to Photoshop and paste again either as smart object or pixels click OK. If I'm going to do it as pixels, I generally would make it considerably larger just to make sure it doesn't lose any quality. And Look at that. I mean, that's a pretty cool little graphic that would have taken us a lot longer to draw in Photoshop. Here's another example of that. One more. There's a set I really like called Dot Pattern Vector Pack. And these are some really interesting shapes that are made up of all these dot patterns, something like this. So I could copy that go into Photoshop, paste it as a smart object. In this case probably maybe turn it around so it's the way I wanted and if necessary scale just a little bit. That's going to put it on a layer by itself. Now if I were to find some graphic, let's just use this since I have it here, drag this in here. It's going to put a layer, then I can make a clipping mask so now this photograph only shows up inside this interesting border. Now for those people that do use Illustrator, it also works the other way around. As, as many of those shapes and things as Illustrator has, it doesn't often have, might not have the basic shape you're looking for. So the other option 
is to go into Photoshop's custom shape tool and look at all these shapes. For example, a shield or an arrow, just, I mean, an arrow. Creating an arrow in Illustrator means you have to pretty much create it yourself. Here, I would just select it, and I'm going to use this middle option, which is to make it as a path. I'll hold down the Shift key, and all I'm going to do is use this path selection tool and go the other way around. Copy, switch to Illustrator, paste as a fully editable shape, and now you'll see there it is coming in to Illustrator. I will point out to you that when you bring it in initially, it has no fill or no strokes. If you want to see it, you want to make sure you do something to it, like a fill. But now it's a completely editable Illustrator file. So if you want to edit something about it, like make the arrow longer, whatever, you certainly can. So those are just a few examples, but there's a lot of interesting ways where you can take elements that are built into Illustrator and use them in Photoshop and the other way around. I'm Dave Cross. Thanks for watching. Ask your short Photoshop question using the contact form here at Kelby TV or through Twitter at Dave Cross. Thanks for watching Ask Dave, brought to you by the National Association of Photoshop Professionals and the Dave Cross Workshops. We'll see you next time.